So perhaps you have a drone, but what you have found is that the photogrammetry software is just too expensive or too difficult to use. And if that's the case, this is an excellent video for you, or if you're just curious as well. I want to tell you all about MapPilot Pro and the processing software Maps Made Easy. This is MapPilot Pro available on Android and iOS free of charge. And you'll see it is available for quite a long list of the DJI drones and also the Autel drones, which is a pretty cool feature. So it's pretty straightforward to use, much like any other flight planning app for drones these days. You just select a normal mission, you go to the area of interest, and to start drawing the polygon, you tap and you hold on the screen and that will place the first point. You then do it for a second point and a third point at which time it's going to draw a polygon like this and then you can just start to drag out those vertices so that you cover your area of interest adequately there are a whole host of other settings as well to with overlap and your flight altitude your speed and all those good things and i'll put a link to other videos because folks have gone into quite an, a good amount of depth on this Maps Made Easy is the processing software, and this is where I'd like to focus this video on. Go to the website, mapsmadeeasy.com, sign up for a free account because there are free and paid versions as well. Now, once you've done that, we go Maps, New Map. So we'll see the options we have here. Either a DJI specific workflow, a classic workflow if you don't have a DJI drone, of course, and interestingly also this flat map workflow. And that's if you just want to make an image, just a simple picture, no 3D elements of whatever area you have captured your images of. And keep in mind, you don't have to use their flight planning software, MapPilot Pro. Obviously, it integrates nicely, but there's no prerequisite for that. So to begin, we want to upload images, and we can see that you are able to use any one of these cloud storage areas or if you have the images already on your local computer you just select and upload and for the dji workflow it wants you to select just one image at first so that it can confirm all the details and make sure it has everything it expects from dji on the right hand side you'll see that their processing model works on this points system 800 images and three gigapixels is the limit for the free version and you'll see there are different processing speeds right away or you know mid-range or the slow version but if you're working on the free model you'll have to choose the slow version which says 24 hours but although it says that on my first try i got my result within two hours which is pretty cool output options there's quite a host but you'll see some of them are limited to the paid accounts even though we can't select full 3d the free option will still give you an author image a digital elevation model and an OBJ 3D model as well. We then want to go down and give our project a name and agree that we have flown in a way that makes sense in terms of having enough overlap and a good enough image quality. And we also just want to approve the information. We then go ahead and upload our images and select all of your DJI images. And you'll see there's a small area here and that's just because all those images i chose there was one that is not a dji image so we can ignore that but what we notice now interestingly is on the right hand side it's telling me that i require 138 points and that's just because i've flown a double image grid and it goes over that three gigapixel limit what i can do to get away from that is to drop the resolution to a, a half which is what I'm going to do in this case. But as you can see, I have that double grid. I could have just deleted one of those passes because even with the, the single grid pass, I would have got some good results. We then select upload images when we've got everything ready and good to go, and it will start uploading and processing. So the upload does take quite a while if you have a lot of images. What Maps Made Easy will then do is they will send you an email to confirm that your processing has commenced. And there's a link, a link that you can click on and go and have a look and see what that progress looks like. When it's finished, they'll send you another email. And this link will then take you through to the results of your processing. So if we click on the link now, it's going to take us through to the, the window 
And here we can see all the details about the processing, the data we input, what the results are, etc. It also tells us about the links. And there's a public link here, which is pretty cool because you can share that out to your client or your friends. And they won't come into this interface and see all of the working details, but they'll just go to the final version, which is a really nice touch. And as you can see here from the time, it took less than two hours for the entire process to complete, which isn't bad for a free service at all. There's a whole list of details that you can take a look at. That's all about the imagery that was input, the processing parameters, and all those good things. And on the right hand side, we see download options because we're able to actually download all of this data to work offline as well. And we will take a look at that a little bit later. At the bottom of the screen, we see the overlap report and it just confirms when we have a look at it that there was a good amount of overlap in the central area for this flight. And on the periphery, we can see where there was less overlap and obviously we expect the accuracy to be a little bit worse in those regions. Also keep in mind, this is a free service, so we're not expecting the world's greatest results, but to be honest, it's pretty impressive considering what we are not paying for it. Very nice in this viewer is that we can also turn on the elevation model and we see the color grid there at the bottom and it looks to be quite accurate compared to what I know this terrain is. On the left hand side, a whole lot of tools where we can draw polygons. So let's go into the full screen view and see what we can play with. So this is the full screen view now, obviously, and we have our author image loaded over there. And as we zoom in, we wait for it to load a bit. And even though this is processed at half resolution, the result is not bad at all. Again, when we do get to the edges, the periphery of the image or of the capture area, we do see some smearing and drop off 100% expected. That would always happen regardless of the software we're using unless we clipped the boundaries. We want to start placing some elements. So very nicely, there's a line tool here. So we place the line tool and you can see as we click on these vertices, it updates to tell us what the length of that line is. It also gives us a warning to say that what changes we make will be or could be visible in the public version and we either accept or reject that. We can also place these place markers, we can give them names, we can annotate them as well, place polygons, place shapes, all sorts of different things. It does keep giving you this public warning. So just keep that in mind. And we can also go ahead and then change the colors if we want of the polygons or the shapes that we're placing. So now I'm going to place a polygon and then see something very interesting. So I'm placing this polygon and I'm clicking to close. So first I get that public warning, but very nicely I get this volume measurement option. So even though this is free, it can calculate volumes. The volume value over here doesn't look quite right. So it, it might need a bit more investigation but really cool to see that that feature is available on a free service. So we can go ahead and we can edit any of these shapes that we've placed. We can move them around. We can change the color. We can resize them. We can measure them. We can do whatever we would like. Keeping in mind that this is a really cool tool which we could use to present to a client or even to our friends and family and just show them this is the area I've flown. This is something that's interesting over here. So they, they really have thought of almost everything. Coming back into the detail view, you want to just go down and highlight the public link option. Again, once we've made any of those edits and annotations, this is what we could select and share that out via email or Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever your preference is to our friends and family. But now I want to take a look at the download options. So if you are an advanced user, a really nice feature is that even though all the processing has happened on the cloud, we are able to download some of these tools and play with them ourselves. So I'm going to take a look at Global Mapper. You'll know it's one of my favorite tools. And here I'm importing the point cloud, the DTM, as well as the image. So I'm going to keep this in meters just because my Global Mapper is set to work in meters. But obviously we can 
change that as we see fit. And let's start by looking at the point cloud. So this is the point cloud that the software has produced. We see it's a little bit sparse on the edges. Again, absolutely fine. We do expect that. And going into the 3D viewer, well, we see a bit of noise where the water is and on the periphery again. But that's nothing that can't be cleaned. A bit of manual effort is always required with a photogrammetric project. Zooming in, we see the density of the point cloud. Not bad at all. I think this is just over 5 million points for this region. So quite impressive. Turning off the RGB view of the point cloud, we can see what else is available to us. It has produced it with an intensity. Well, the pseudo faked intensity still looks pretty impressive and an elevation as well. So Maps Made Easy really does give you a whole host of options. This is now the author mosaic that I'm looking at. Again, it's done a really nice job. And here in post-processing, if we want, we could perhaps go into our imagery and if we weren't satisfied with the color, perhaps just up the contrast again or do whatever we wanted here. A bit exaggerated, but really just to prove the point of how we can edit our imagery. Looking at the metadata, we see everything is geolocated. It's used the GPS coming off of the DJI drone that's embedded in the EXIF data of those images as well. We see our pixel resolution, all the details of the imagery that it's saved into that file's metadata. This is now an image of the digital elevation model. I say it's an image because it's not true 3D. This is just a picture to pass on. But here now we have the true 3D digital elevation model. We can see our scale bar on the left hand side. So again, there is noise below the surface here. We saw that previously. So I'm going to go ahead and just edit that bottom level to clean it up just to some extent so that we can make some additional products. So it's looking a little bit better now. Obviously in post-processing, we would spend more time here to clean it up. And well, let's go ahead and generate contours. Why not? Let's see what they look like. Again, considering this is a 100% free service, let those contours be generated. And that is certainly not a bad result at all. So I'm going to take a look at it now in the 3D viewer, just to make sure that it all makes sense. And when we pivot around in it at the moment, it all looks really quite impressive. So that's all I'm going to show you for now. It's a wonderful tool, but I think for anyone who hasn't played with photogrammetry, anything like that, mapsmadeeasy.com, free of charge up to a certain limit, create maps, share them with your friends and family, even your clients. It's amazing what you can do for free these days. 